Hello. Thanks. Uh, welcome back to the lecture series on photochemistry. In the last lecture, we have seen what photochemistry is and what are the photochemical reactions. We have also tried to elaborate the uh, concept of uh, thermal as well as photochemical reaction and differentiating between those. Well, in this second session, uh, we will try to cover few aspects related to the photochemistry and that is laws of absorption of light. Uh, we all know that in our previous session we have finished two topics and that is photochemistry and the photochemistry uh, uh, and the difference between the thermal and the photochemical reaction. In today's talk we will try to cover the laws of absorption of light with a special mention of Lambert's law and the BS law. In this part two of our lecture we will cover first the Lambert's law. Now let us imagine that when a light falls on the matter there are three different things that can happen. Number one the substance will absorb the light. Number two the substance will reflect the light and number three the substance will transmit the light. The laws of absorption of light these are related to what happens to the intensity of the light when a light is passed through a particular solution. For example if we have some homogeneous substance and when we pass a light of intensity say I0 about intensity I have already told what is intensity intensity refers to the number of photons per second so when it is transmitted through the through the homogeneous pure medium which may be a solid you can imagine as if you have a colored glass and you are passing a light through it what happens to it the intensity of the transmitted light decreases so it can be seen from here it can be seen from here that uh, light has been transmitted through this material and the intensity got decreased. And the Lambert's law deals with the study of this. What is the statement of the Lambert's law? It states that when a beam of monochromatic light should not be polychromatic. You cannot pass a white light through a material. You have to pass a monochromatic light when it is passed through a homogeneous pure medium. What happens? there occurs a decrease in the intensity. The decrease in the intensity of light with the thickness of absorbing medium is proportional to the intensity of incident radiation. This is a statement of the Lambert's law. What mathematically we can write that there occurs a decrease when the light passes through this medium there occurs a decrease in the intensity of light. So this decrease in the intensity of light with the thickness let in this diagram L is shown but you can consider it as X. So Decrease in the intensity with the thickness of medium will be mathematically minus di by dx. So minus di by dx is proportional to the intensity of the incident light i. What we can do? We can derive the lamp equation for the Lambert's law. So mathematically what we can write? Minus di by dx is proportional to the intensity of light or removing the sign, uh, removing the sign of proportionality. We can put a constant k here. So you can write, rewrite the equation as minus di by dx is equal to k into i where i is the in, in, intensity of the incident radiation x refers to the thickness of the medium and k is a constant which is commonly called as absorption coefficient or extinction coefficient and we can separate the variable means taking i on one side and x on other side so we can rewrite the equation as my, di by i is equal to minus k into dx now in order to get this different in order to convert this differential equation into a uh, integral form we need to integrate this equation and for those we have to put the limits let the limit be i is equal to i0 at x is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 refers to the starting point and x is equal to x refers to the whole length of the of the material so at i is equal to i0 at x is equal to 0 and i is equal to i at x is equal to x so on integral on integration we get like this in, integral i0 to i minus uh, sorry di by i is equal to minus k being constant uh, integral 0 to x dx and it will come out to be ln i upon <coughs> i0 or we can write this equation in the form of exponential form that is i upon i0 is equal to e raised to power minus kx or 
If we convert the above equation into the log to the base 10, this is log to the base e, we can convert it to the log to the base 10 like log i upon i0 is equal to minus k upon 2.303x. We all know that converting ln into log, we need to multiply it by 2.303. So that 2.303 will be the denominator in the equation. So this is the final equation that is log of i0 upon i is equal to k upon 2.303x. We have changed the minus sign because minus log of i upon i0 will be log of i0 upon i. Here k1, k1 is another constant which is uh, k upon uh, 2.303 and it is referred as extension coefficient and extension coefficient depends upon the nature of the substance and the wavelength of the incident light. So if you change the wavelength and if you change the absorbing material, for example, if you have a blue colored glass and if you are changing it to a green colored glass, then the absorption coefficient will be different for the green glass and the blue glass. Moving forward, now what the, the Lambert's law is applicable to solids. What about the liquids? When it comes to the liquid, we came to the solution. And when it comes to the solution, we add some colored substance to the we add some colored substance to the solvent. Solvent is usually the water. So the same thing, same rule applies here. If the intensity, if a light of intensity I0, it is allowed to pass through a, a solution of a absorbing sample of concentration C through a path length B, what happens? You can see, note the arrow here. The arrow is thicker one and either, here is, is thinner one. So intensity got decreased. What does it mean? Some photons, Intensity, as I said, intensity refers to the number of photons per second. What happened? Some of the photons are being absorbed by the absorbing material. And Beer's law is essentially extension of Lambert's law to the solution. So here, when it comes to the solution, few more things will come into play. And that is the important thing that will come into play is a concentration. So if we incorporate that concentration term, we will get a statement for the Beer's law. What it states? The BS law can be straight, stated like this. When a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a solution of an absorbing substance, the decrease in the intensity of light, again the same thing, minus di by dx, decrease in the intensity of light with the thickness of the solution. Instead of medium, we are writing solution here. Is directly proportional to the intensity of incident radiation as well as to the concentration of the solution. So here two things come into play. Number one, intensity of the incident radiation and second one is the concentration of the solute in the solution. Now we will try to derive the equation mathematically. We can rewrite the we can write the equation as minus di by dx which is decrease in the intensity with the thickness of medium is proportional to in intensity of incident radiation as well as to the concentration. So minus di by dx is equal to you remove the sign of proportionality by some constant alpha then it will become alpha into i into c. What are the terms involved? I refers to the intensity, x refers to the thickness. I'm sorry, this should be small x. C is a concentration, which should be again small. Uh, and alpha refers to the proportionality constant. Uh, we can separate the variable, means taking i on one side, l on other, uh, x on other side, and c on other side, and rearranging the equation, and then again integrating between the limits i is equal to i0 at x is equal to 0 and i is equal to i at x is equal to x. The same way we did for the Lambert's law, we, we, what we will get? We will get integral i0 to i di by i is equal to minus alpha into c because concentration of the solution will not change once you put it in the, uh, once you put it under observation. So these two things are constant, only variable is x. So 0 to x dx. So it will become ln i upon i0 which is equal to minus alpha into c into x or you can write it in an exponential form i upon i0 is equal to e raised to power minus alpha c x or log of i upon i0 is equal to minus alpha upon 2.303 c into x or log of i0 upon i because if you multiply both sides by minus negative sign you will get i upon i0 log of i upon i0 will become log of i0 upon i is equal to alpha upon 2.303 into c into x and alpha upon 2.303 uh, sorry here it should be alpha so alpha upon 2.303 can be replaced by another constant which is known as epsilon so epsilon so the equation final equation becomes log of i0 upon i is equal to epsilon cx 
or log of i0 upon i is also known as absorption or optical density of the solution. So we can rewrite the equation, final equation as a is equal to log of i0 upon i epsilon cx. And this is an equation which, which cannot be presented in the PowerPoint form. Actually, you need to write the equation at home. So here you will come across few terms. Term number one is absorbance or optical density or absorptivity. One and the same. It is referred by A. What is A? A is equal to log of I0 upon I. And the ratio of I upon I0. I upon I0 means uh, log of, uh, sorry, ratio of I upon I0 is known as T or transmittance. And trans, uh, so uh, you can uh, virtually derive the relationship between A and the transmittance. So A will be equal to log of 1 upon T. And this uh, epsilon, which is known as absorption coefficient, it is alpha upon 2.303. So this is the final form of the equation of the BS law. Here you came across one more term which is known as epsilon. Now let us put some condition. In the next slide we will try to elaborate what is molar extinction coefficient. So epsilon refers to alpha upon 2.303 which is known as absorption coefficient or also known as extinction coefficient. And as, as mentioned earlier absorption coefficient is a characteristic of a solute and depends upon the nature of the solvent because here you are dealing with the solution. So it characteristic of the solute, I mean, if you put a blue color dye, then it will have different absorption coefficient. If you put a red color dye, it will have a different absorption coefficient. And it also depends upon the nature of the solvent because uh, the same dye in different solvent will appear different. For example, if you add iodine to water, it will appear uh, um, uh, pale yellow when when you add it to some other solvent like benzene or to other it can appear violet or blue so sometimes due to the solute solvent interaction the color of the solution also changes and one more thing that you need to keep in mind of course the wavelength of the light as well as the temperature because there are some thermochromic material if you change the temperature they change their color so uh, this is the uh, these these are the means it depends upon four things. Number one, it is a it depends upon the nature of solvent, number of uh, sorry temperature, and the wavelength of the light used. Now, our equation was a absorptivity is equal to epsilon into cx. Now, if you want to exp explain the ap absorptivity epsilon or molar extinction coefficient epsilon in terms of absorptivity. What we can do, we can assume that we have kept the concentration of the solution as 1 mole per decimeter cube and the path length of 1 centimeter. Means C becomes 1 and X becomes 1. When C becomes 1 and X becomes 1, A becomes epsilon. So you can define epsilon in terms of uh, when the solution is expressed in mole per decimeter cube and its concentration is 1, then you can define like this the molar absorption coefficient or the molar extinction coefficient is defined as the absorbance of the solution when the concentration is one mole per decimeter cube and the path length is unity. <laughs> this is very very important and we have to solve the numerical. So what, what, what are the equations you need to keep in mind? You need to keep an equation of epsilon in mind. You need to keep the equation of uh, uh, this BS law which is log of I0 upon I is equal to epsilon Cx. You need to also keep the relationship between absorbance and the transmittance. So absorbance is the log of 1 upon T or minus log of T. These are the few important equations that you will be using while solving the numericals. Uh, next, now as we know that according to the BS law, uh, what is expected? A is equal to epsilon Cx. If epsilon is constant and x is constant then if you change the concentration of the solution what what you should get you should get a straight line if you try to plot between absorbance versus concentration you should get a straight line passing through the origin which means that there occurs a linear relationship between absorbance and the concentration so you should get a straight line passing through the origin but what happens practically after certain concentration the graph behaves like this ob it, it behaves like ob rather than oa so why this deviation occurs? This is referred as deviation. Why this deviation occurs? There are many reasons for the deviation. The, the reasons for the deviation are, are mentioned in the statement of the BS law itself. The first point is if your substance contains some impurity that undergo fluorescence, fluorescence means it, lim it emits its light or it absorbs the light, then what will happen? the linearity will not be followed. 
second is the colored solution under solute undergo association or dissociation or some other reaction like polymerization hydrolysis etc if it undergoes some other reaction what will happen the nature of the solute will change and if the nature of the solute will change then the absorbance will not be the will not be the same as it was expected so as a result what will happen it will show deviation high concentration it is said that uh, in order to verify the beers law the concentration should be very very dilute in other in other words you should use the ultra dilute solution so if the concentration exceeds 10 to the power minus 3 molar means 10 to the power minus 3 moles per liter then there will occur a deviation it will only follow it let us assume that in this graph say if the concentration it exceeds when it exceeds 10 to the power minus 3 it will start showing deviation rather than showing the straight line the rather than following the path oa it will follow the path it will follow the path oa up to this and then it will follow the path ob so high concentration is one thing beer's law then sometimes if a solution is not homogeneous because the the, the statement of the beer's law says that it is passed through a homogeneous solution if a solution is turbid or having some suspension then again there is a possibility that when it interacts with the light it undergoes refraction or reflection and in that case what will happen it will not follow the linear relationship again there are some suspended impurities or air bubble present in the solution if some suspended impurities or air bubble are present in the solution again it will not follow the uh, the linear relationship between the absorbance and the concentration so you can cite these as the reason another thing is change in temperature change in ph ionic strength you know that there are some thermochromic material if you change the temperature they change their color so altogether their property will change and as a result the beer's law will not be followed the same thing happens with the ph you know that when you change the ph like you you use the various indicators in the laboratory so when you change the ph the color of the indicator changes so if you change the ph then again it will lead to the change in the concentration of the index of the solution. So after irradiation of the light, if some reaction takes place, if some photochemical reaction takes place and the refractive index of the solution changes, then again the Beer's law, uh, the, uh, there will be a deviation from the Beer's law and is not matched. The sample cell or the, which is also known as cuvette in which the solution is taken, if it is not matched, not matched means because if you are using different types of cuvette for the same experiment then again your you will not get a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration the reason for this is every cuvette has got different absorptivity of its own even though it looks colorless to the human eye so you have to use the same type of cuvette for throughout the same throughout the experiment so if these things are followed then uh, yeah, one more reason which I skipped is slit width is not uniform. If the slit width, slit means uh, the the aperture through which the light is allowed to fall on the on the sample solution. If that slit is width is not uniform, means you are not allowing the same number of photons to pass through that slit. Then again, there will be a deviation. So these are a few reasons for the deviation from the BS law. So, uh, with these. I will thank you all. We will see you in the next lecture where we will be talking about the laws of photochemistry. Thank you everyone. Stay home. Stay safe.